Hey, Greg. Um, for, for moments there, you guys looked to be headed in the right direction there. They had a, uh, the penalty kick and then the header sort of t uh, changed things around there. What, what did you see from the sideline there? Yeah, I, I mean, for a lot of the day, I was pleased with our performance. I was pleased with uh, our effort, our energy. We, we punished ourselves today. Today, we, we killed ourselves today. And that's unfortunate against a, a good team, you know, that's on a, that's, uh, has momentum in their favor. And, you know, the first goal, we give the ball away right in front of us. That just starts a transition. And so, you know, we're trying to manage it. We manage the first one. It pops back out a little bit unlucky maybe, but it is what it is. And ball goes wide and you don't want Vela in that situation. We've seen that goal 200 times over his career probably. Uh, and now we're down 1-0. And again, you just you feel a little bit, uh, for a few minutes, I felt like there was some, again, disappointment in the group because honestly, for the first 20 minutes, it, it was there was one team on the field. And I know they're really good, but they couldn't get the ball off of us. They couldn't stop us from going forward and they couldn't get a possession going in our half of the field. That's not their game. Their game is about killing you in transition. And, and that's what they did in that particular moment because we gave it to them. But I felt the emotion after that a little bit, which um, I think slowed down the speed at which the ball was moving prior to that, which was creating so many problems for them. We started to get a little bit uh, bogged down, um, but I think we kind of came out of it, got the goal. Tyler hit a laser, which sometimes you need something like that just to unlock the goal a little bit. Um, and it also put us at 1-1 coming into halftime. And, and Again, I thought the game was a little bit of a stalemate in the beginning of the second half at 1-1, and it was, you know, we're starting to look at ways to to pick up the speed, the intensity again, stuff like that. And that's when we make, when a course of two minutes, we make two colossal mistakes. You know, the it's our throw in, and inside of the depth of the 18, and given the opposition and what they're looking for and where we are. And the fact that Sega just came on the field, we just can't throw the ball in front of our goal like that. It's, and Rod knows, it's, it just can't happen. Like, we need to protect our goal and throw the ball forward. And sometimes you live to fight another day on some of these plays. It's not the play that you have to do something. So, again, we put Sega in a tough situation. I don't think he's expecting it. And uh, we commit a penalty. And now, um, you know, two minutes later, as we're starting to to again organize and get ourselves back going in the game. We give up a corner kick uh, and we know it's coming to the back post. Um, we've talked about it all week. We know it's coming, it hangs up there and Mark doesn't see it and he's in a difficult matchup and uh, Holling said puts it away on us, but we've got we've to deal with that better. We dealt with a fair number of corners on the day, all really well and that one we didn't, we didn't deal with it well. Um, after that we were, you know, we were we were pressing. So, of course, they got some things in transition because that's their game. Um, but I thought the speed at which we were going, the intention, Javi has a great chance or two. Ricky hits one off the post. Uh, Lucas hits a, a nice shot. The keeper makes a good save. So even after all of that, we still had our chances to, to put ourselves right back in the game and maybe get something out of it. Um, so I'm, I'm proud of the guy's effort. This has been a... An interesting week for everybody, but the effort for the guys has been uh, was fantastic, and I thought at times our performance was fantastic. I've never been more sure about this group's ability to do something special this season than than today. And so, but we gotta we've got to cut out the part where we hurt ourselves and uh, make the other team have to beat us, and and then do our job on the other side. Um, with uh, with Javier starting, you're able to get Ade on the field. Uh, we saw a more complete galaxy in terms of what you have available to you. Um, what what were some of the specifics that you saw from that group, from uh, being able to have those guys in there, that uh, that you see as as taking a step forward today? Yeah, I thought you know uh, having Javier again, as I've said all week, it's it's not just having another great player on the field it's having a leader it's having kind of an emotional leader who in the locker room before we go out when we're going he just he's the most extroverted in in the locker room in terms of firing guys up and getting them going and so I think everybody feeds off that you know when you can when you're behind and you see in front of you and you have a striker like Javi that that uh, is super intelligent knows for goal understands how to make little plays throughout the course of the game 
has brought the energy that he needed to, I think, through good stretch of the game. You just, you know you have, you know you have a chance in, in many of those moments. I used to say that in the past too with the other guys we had in the other team. But, so it's just, it was nice to have him back. Um, I think, again, our organizational, our setup in terms of uh, the game and especially early in the game when the ball was moving fast and late in the game when the ball was moving fast, we were going to be a very difficult team to play against. I thought Ricky was excellent today as well. I thought it was the best game of the season so far, um, which shows you, you know, again, what he's capable of. Uh, getting, I thought Lucas was excellent too, by the way, today. I thought he had a very difficult assignment against the hottest player in the league through much of the day, and I thought he was fantastic. Um, and getting Julian on is good, and it's not an easy entrance for a young guy who's been here for a week to come into this kind of derby and have the pressure of having to try to go get two goals out of it. And, and, um, but I thought we saw some really, some really nice things out of him. And uh, you know, we look forward to what he will bring to our group. But like you said, we're starting to get whole. Um, we still believe we have some more to get whole, but we, we are starting to get there. But. Uh, the, the injury to Chris Mavinga seemed to change a little things there. Do you have an update on, on him? And then um, maybe you can talk a little bit about Jalen Neal and, and how a 19-year-old comes in and handles his first uh, El Trafico. First about Chris, not really sure. Uh, it's kind of in the ankle area that was there. Um, so I, I'm not really quite sure what it is or, or you know the extent of the, the injury. Um, hopefully nothing too too bad. Um, but yeah, it's whenever you're changing center backs in games like this, it doesn't, it's, it's not easy always. And so, uh, and Sega, who hasn't had a ton of minutes for us through the season, but has been really sharp in training, he's entering a highly emotional game and, you know, in a tough situation potentially. So um, not an easy, not easy for any center backs to be put into those types of situations. So um, <clears throat> as far as Jalen, I mean, what, what, again, what I've said about Jalen uh, so many times is that it's just his composure. It's the way that he keeps his, his, his temperament, his emotion. It's always very, very steady. Uh, so it doesn't really matter if it's the El Trafico or if it's training. It, he's the same, same emotionally. And when you can do that as a center back and stay in that sort of game reading, problem solving mind, uh, it, it really helps you through the course of the game. He never. You know, and he, he, he makes good reads. He's got a great frame and athleticism. He, he has a lot of good things going for him, which we're all seeing kind of now come out during these games. Uh, he has more growth to go both physically and as a player, which is, which is really special and gonna be fun to watch and be a part of. Um, and I think as he continues to do that, I think he'll become more physical and a little bit, have a little nasty in there sometimes in the, in the right way, in the right moments. Uh, to be even more difficult to play against, but but again, he shows you uh, why. In my opinion, I believe he'll be a high, high level center back, and it just comes from how he works up there. Hey, Greg, uh, you mentioned it uh, earlier about having uh, you know your team play well and uh, being able to kind of at time to the game be the better team for you as a coach um, with the players uh, mentally. Kind of how are you able to kind of help them? You know, keep their morale up. They're they're playing good football. Um, just unlike in these moments for you, how are you kind of dealing with that, the, your players? Yeah, it, you know, look, guys have, guys have been around the block and they know how, how things work. Uh, and so it's frustrating. Guys are disappointed. Um, they believe in what they're doing, which is the first and most important thing inside of it. If you believe in what you're doing and you, uh, you can understand that you can separate sometimes performance a little bit and result. Ultimately, we're in a results-oriented business, so those are the things that give you really the emotion that you really want to go home, whether you're fans or whether you're players or whether you're anyone. You want the emotion of winning the game, and sometimes you love, almost always, you'd rather win the game than play well. But I think they believe, I know they believe, that in the way we're playing, there are results inside of this, and a lot of results inside of this. We've got to stop hurting ourselves. We've got to stop having our letdowns, and we've got to take our chances when we get there, and that's just execution at the end of the day. It's execution. Uh, and as we continue to get, you know, Javi fit and in front of the goal, you know he can score goals. We've seen it. Um, and as we continue to get our group whole, we know that there's quality inside of the group, and, and that will that will play out over time. You know, our expected goals is above most teams when we play them on the week, and now we've got to turn that into execution uh, in key moments of the game. Last one, Sophie. 
Hey, Greg. Um, that was probably one of the best losses I've seen in a long time, um, especially from an, a Greg Vanny LA Galaxy team. Uh, really good question there. And just to riff off that a little bit, how do you... There's a player like Ricky Pooch today who was incredible and put the team on his back. I thought it was probably one of his best games in a sure. Galaxy shirt. Can you talk us a little, talk to us a little bit about him, his performance? Deserved the goal, hit the post. It was insane. Um, he was brilliant today. Yeah, you know, I, I think when when we get our spacing right and uh, when we get the ball moving quickly. Uh, Ricky has the capacity to just pick up the ball on the move and get by almost anyone. It's it's incredible how he almost accelerates when he has the ball at his foot and he's faster with it than without it. And the way he can spin out of things and turn, he, he can sometimes in our midfield, he can get you from one line into the next line so quickly, which then changes the whole the whole picture inside of the game. And I thought he did that exceptionally well today. I mean, the amount of times he was able to pick up the ball on the move get on the other side of their midfield and then start to initiate attacks out of that is it's what we need from him but it's his gold it's it's what makes him so fun to watch and what makes him special is again you've seen anybody who's been around the league and you know, for since the beginning there was a player uh, Peter Novak who was very kind of similar to that it just was crazy how these guys they're faster with the ball than they are without the ball and the way they pick it up on the move and and start to turn what looks like maybe a just a normal possession into all of a sudden a real attack. And uh, Ricky has that goal, that's his, that's his thing. And I think our spacing was good. I think in general over the game, the ball speed was moving, so it was harder to get numbers around him to keep him kind of squeezed in. Um, and when we do that, when we play simple and the ball moves, he finds the right times and spaces to do those special things that he's capable of doing. And tonight, a lot of those were working for good stretches of the game. All right, thanks for your yeah. time, Greg. Thank you.